Um, we'll talk about common rail diesel fuel injectors today. So, I guess the biggest question is, why do these fail? What are some common failure points? What are the causes? What are the potential remedies from a reoccurrence? And if if you really look out, you can find quality versions of these. So there has been some counterfeiting of late. Oh, my chair creaks too much. Sorry about that. Um, let's start with the piezo. So why would or why does a piezo injector fail? Fuel, typically. Fuel is going to be the culprit for pretty much any failure that any of these injectors encounter. Um, there can also be mechanical failures that are not fuel related, like uh, bad solenoid coal for these electromagnetic injectors, cracks forming in the body, leaks. You know, essentially that's that's what's going to happen to them. Um, there could be other issues as well, and those will be internal, and that's predominantly what we're going to speak of. We're going to talk about how to keep a recurrence of problems from getting you down. Now, these injectors should last a very long time, and with good quality fuel, free of water, and free of dirt and contaminants, these things should last well in excess of 100,000 miles. So with that said, the common failure point is going to be a good lubricating fuel that is clean and free of water and free of dirt. So if you get that, these things should last a couple of hundred thousand miles. My shop truck has 300,000 on it, still has factory OEM injectors in it. So it's a possibility and that you you can achieve those kind of miles and we've encountered some customers lately who are buying remanufactured injectors and they're just not getting the life out of them now could it be that something else is causing this problem is the product inferior or is there something that is quickly degrading those injectors so let's talk about water in the fuel what will water in the fuel cause. Water in the fuel will cause rust to form inside the system. And when the rust gets up to the point that you actually have the granules of rust breaking off, it's it's got a potential savior in the fact that most of these injectors are equipped with a filter. Uh, this is called an edge filter and it's designed if a piece of trash gets in there, it grinds it up, high pressure fuel pounds against it, until it can pass through the injector. Well, it'll pass through the injector all right and make a big wire scar with it. And if there's enough going through there constantly, it's just going to wire it out prematurely. That's how it works. So that's what rust does. And the only way to get rid of the rust, there's one of two ways. We have a solution here that we use that we've mixed up that it effectively gets rid of it. It removes it. And uh, there's also, a, a, it won't get rid of pits, but it'll get rid of the rust itself and, and uh, you know, keep it from spreading. Kills the cancer, so to speak. Uh, the other way is to replace the part to one that is, you know, from rusty to one that is rust free. Uh, that's your second possibility. But if, can you see rust that's inside a little small high pressure line? No, you can't. You don't know if there's rust in there or not. Uh, you can, uh, these rails are gun drilled, so you can take a fuel rail and take the end fittings out and look up inside there and look at the end fittings themselves. You know, typically on the back of that fitting, rust is going to start to form. So if there's rust in there, there's rust other places. So, you know, that's the problem there as well. Third, like in the failure of the piezo with the CP4 piece of junk garbage pump that you know, Bosch has forced upon the people. What a piece of junk it is. It should be a shame. You know, their over-the-road stuff has a um, 
has a little key, a pin that guides the tappet in the board. Let me, let me grab something right quick. The, the CP4 should have it, but it doesn't. So this is the, this is the roller tappet from a CP4 pump. And as you can see, it's smooth all the way around. Now, the over-the-road counterparts have a groove cut in them. There's a pin that goes through the side of the pump to keep this thing from rotating in the bore. This was designed by morons. You know, this, this is a engineered failure point. It is designed to fail. There's no way around it. There's nothing to keep this thing from rotating in the bore. And let me get the camshaft out of it. So you've got this little, you got this little divot in here, this little dip. And this little dip, its only purpose is to keep this thing aligned. So it'll snap back into alignment. Once this thing rotates in the bore, and it'll do it, and it comes around after about two swipes, you got a groove cut in here. This thing ain't never going to straighten itself up. That's the failure point of these pumps. It's, it's, it's a joke. It's junk. It's garbage. And somebody honestly should have their pants suit off forever, you know, putting this off on the public. You know, it's a betrayal of, you know, what should be common sense. So enough rant about that piece of junk. CP3 is the best, most durable pump that, in my opinion, common rail high pressure pump that's ever been made. So, but they have their problems too. We're going to discuss that here. So, secondary concern. Okay, we've got, you know, electrical failures of the coal. We've got potential cracks. Uh, you know, some because of the, you know, the issue with the relief valve in the 6.7 LVZ and LMM Duramax is being a stupid design too, just like some of this other stuff. You know, if ain't nothing wrong with it, don't try to fix it. Bosch did that with the two-stage relief valve. And now what do people do for those? Well, they put a plug in the rail. Well, what happens when you do that? Well, you can do one of two things. These high-pressure fuel spikes, there's an internal high-pressure seal inside this pump. Let me get one to show you. She so got these right here. And it's a, I'm not... Some type of a plastic, I guess. It's a ring, and then it's got a metal pressure plate. So your high pressure can actually blow this fit, this seal here. This seals the outer part against the inside of the injector, and the inner part seals the control valve, the valve head assembly. Or it's not an assembly. You've got a control valve and a valve head. Let me get you one of those. You can see it. So this is your this is your control valve assembly. So you've got you know the the rod. This is the actual valve. So you got a little tiny ball that sets in here, and then you got a little bitty tiny passage. I've gotten them in here before, and they got a little piece, a red piece of shop rag stuck in this hole, and then this thing here, limp noodle. It has no control. The injector goes wide open and you're done. Connecting rod goes outside the engine block. Oh, look, I'm wearing metal shims. Get those out of the way. So, your rail plugs can blow this seal. And when it does, your system's going to lose pressure. You're going to lose performance and fuel mileage. And, you know, your truck is going to be an anchor. So that's one bad aspect. Second bad aspect, the pressure gets so high, it actually causes the diameter of this nut to expand and it will loosen, you know, because it stretched the threads, it will loosen. You can get fuel leaks from here. And there's an O-ring that goes here. So if you get a leak here on the, the ones that, uh, you know, the valve cover covers up the injectors, 
and it's below that O-ring, it's going to return the fuel to the tank. You never even know it. But on the Duramax applications that just go down into the cylinder head, you can actually have fuel coming up out of the cylinder head leaking, you know, the outside of the valve cover. So that's a secondary concern. Those rail plugs are, that's a, a worse solution to a bad problem. So there you have a problem. So then what do we have next? We have wear, metal to metal, like we were showing you with the CP4, generated by the CP3 pump itself. Now if you see these flats, I'll show you what they drive here in a second. You see the little shiny spot, the wear? That has eroded metal away from abrasion, and that metal goes through your injectors. And you can get this wear. This is the supply pump that is on the back of the CP3 pump. And it is essentially two gears, metal on metal contact. This flat of this shaft, looks like a giant straight bladed screwdriver, goes in here and rotates. This is a direct shot from your supply pump or, you know, if you're a Duramax LB7 or whatever with no lift pump, it's sucking the fuel out of the tank, pressurizing it to a higher level here to make the actual CP3 pump itself generate pressure. So what they've done in the later ones, this is a later style. The old style, like LB7 and 5.9 LLY, this was two pieces of what looked to be stamped out sheet metal and they would cause to you know in my opinion they generated more wear than this piece which appears to be powdered metal and it's it's a more compatible hardness to the shaft itself so they've designed that so that it would you know potentially cause less wear and what they've also done as well is they have reduced the pressure that these that these supply pumps are to generate so they've gone from about 80 PSI internal pressure uh, down to, you know, in the 50s. And the side loading from the gears or from, you know, the fact that these are mass produced and they're not precision machined, they can uh, lead to wire metal to metal contact against this plate. Now, this is anodized aluminum, which is a deposit of an anodization of aluminum to be deposited upon this and it's called hard anodized. If I take a knife blade and try to scratch this, it would only scratch the knife blade. You see, this is an Allen wrench and it's hard. It won't scratch it. I mean, it'll mark it, but it won't scratch it because this is as hard as that Allen wrench on the surface. But then in an extreme instance, you end up seeing them like this. This goes to the injectors. All this metal goes to the injectors. And I, I think I was a bit unprepared. I'm going to pull the, what's called a DRV valve. No, I can't. That one. I've already taken the filter off of it. So if I put a DRV valve like is on your, your piezo systems to control the pressure uh, at the end of the fuel rail, it's an actual valve that's designed to control the rail pressure. They have these little tiny filters in them. We actually use those to test our CP3 pumps, you know, when we're actually testing, you know, the pump uh, w without using the M-prop you know, to, uh, to generate and maintain the pressure, we use that. Those things, after just testing a couple of pumps, they get covered over with metal. You pull it out and it looks like a porcupine with metal all over it. I'm talking from brand new pumps. They generate metal. So here's the deal. Your injectors are going to fail one of two reasons. It's going to be a mechanical defect, which is, you know, those are pretty rare, or it's going to be from metal and water or dirt in the fuel. That's the only thing it's going to cause them to fail and or abuse from too much pressure. So what I want to tell you is you need to be anal about your fuel system. And probably one of the worst things that truly happened is this stuff became affordable for the consumer. And then parts started getting counterfeited to where, you know, just any Tom, Dick or Harry's installing this stuff. And even some of the dealerships have problems. There's no one that is, you know, incapable of making mistakes. We're all, you know, failures at some point in some way. And if you don't think you are, you haven't really looked at yourself very hard. You know, we're all sinners. We've all missed the mark. And we do that even in the things that we do the best sometimes. So it's possible you leave a little piece of dirt somewhere and it gets in one of these injectors. It's going to mess it up. There's no way around it.
That's the whole point I'm trying to make. You know, you have the human factor involved here. And then you also have, you know, we're dealing in a fallen world to where, you know, things just aren't going to last. There's going to be rust. There's going to be thorns and thistles in your life. It's just the way it is. But there are things that we can do to safeguard ourselves from this. You know, if, if we are knowledged with the wisdom and the knowledge and the understanding of what can happen here, and we realize that if we're just replacing a set of injectors expecting a different result, and we've got rust in our system, you know, we've got water in our fuel, we've got other contaminants, we got a CP3 pump that is, you know, like this, really generating a ton of metal, sending it through the injectors. If you don't know, you don't know. But if you're armed with the understanding of what can happen to these pumps, now this was just a stock high mileage pump. So if we're armed with the possibility of what can happen, you know, then we're going to investigate further. Why did mine go bad? Why did mine fail? And my whole purpose, I want to educate people. I don't want to see people waste their money and waste their time and, you know, end up expecting a different result than what they're going to get. That's insanity. Doing the same thing twice, expecting a different result. It's not going to happen, folks. And, you know, these knockoff injectors that you can buy counterfeit from China that are 100 bucks a piece on Amazon, them things ain't nothing but junk. It ain't a real Bosch injector. It's a Chinese counterfeit. They've made it look just like it. We get stuff in here that I would trust as being OEM, and it's a counterfeit. They've even... They've even duped us on the packaging. And that stuff just won't last. Believe me, I have fell under the spell of that too and bought it knowing better. Oh, well, here's an improp for $50. Well, they got them for 19 bucks now. Fuel control actuator. They've got those things dirt cheap now. And it's, you can't tell them apart. I mean, if, if you really get down and start measuring, you got two or three OEM ones, yeah, you can tell them apart then. But I'm telling you, They've counterfeited this stuff, and, you know, the Cummins 5.9 ones that you can get for, like, 500 bucks a set with the crossover tubes, you can take those crossover tubes and pound them down against the tabletop, and metal shavings will fall out of them. It's junk. You can't buy the parts to rebuild the injectors for what they're selling a the whole injector for, and you tell me it's quality, and, you know, you buy it, and I've read those reviews, you know, and it's like, you know, three out of five. Oh, well, my truck ran okay for 10 minutes. Uh, my truck wouldn't even start. I was driving mine, and next thing I knew, it started knocking. And I went outside, and it had a big hole in the side of the engine block. That's what you're going to get with a $100 injector. Don't expect to get anything different. I mean, it's foolishness to think that, you know, what should cost $250 to $300, you can get it for 100 bucks. It sounds too good to be true. It ain't a myth, folks. It is too good to be true. If it sounds too good to be true, it is. I'm a consumer, and believe me, that happens to me. I buy stuff, oh, well, that looks like a really good deal. Sometimes you do get something at a really good deal, but you got to be very careful what you're getting. So, and what I'm trying to tell you, it's disguised. It's like the word of truth. It's disguised today. They want to hide it, you know, and oh, it looks just like it. Look, it's in the blue bag, and it says Bosch on the box, and $100 a piece. I wish that were the case, and I wish it was true, and I was, you know, one of the few that knew about it, but <laughs> that's not the case at all, <laughs> and it's, it's really, it's frightening. You know, if they can do this, and you hold it in your hand, and you can hold two side by side, and you really can't tell them apart, what can they do with other things? So, you know, some of you will understand the path I'm taking. Um, Truth has become a thing of obscurity. And, you know, truth is subjective. You know, it's in the eyes of the beholder. That's not, that's subjective truth. That's not real truth. So, listen, be careful. Uh, I'm not trying to get anybody to send me anything. I'm just trying to educate the consumer. You know, if you're doing the same thing, expecting a different result, don't. That's insanity. We don't do the same thing twice, expecting a different result. You know, Thomas Edison invented the light bulb. If he'd kept trying the same thing over and over again, he would have never succeeded. And it's not how many times did you fail to do it. It's like, you know, he finally hit on the right combination, you know, the right material and the right type of gas 
you know, to charge that bulb with to get it to work. You know, so it's not failures. There's only usually one one road to success. We need to really consider that. So if you've got questions, if you've got comments, um, you know, keep it clean. Uh, let's drop them down there in the comments and, you know, uh, we'll do our best to answer them and answer your questions. And, you know, maybe there's other videos you'd like to see and you've got questions. Um, but this is the reality. I mean, I haven't masked anything in what I've told you. It's all true. And I hope that there's something in there that is of benefit to you. And I want to thank you for watching. Hope you have a good day.